All right, so I haven't posted a video in a few weeks now. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'll tell you how this week, well, this week, when my video stopped last time, I only had like a week and a half left. So I'll tell you how the week went, the full week went this episode, and the next episode will be as if I were just now posting it. But I'll tell you how it went. So, I'm just going to get this out of the way real quick because it's a quick story. Basically, the last week, the last full week of my 60 course was just flying, non-stop. Um, we were on nights, so I was, I was going in at... Briefing started at 1800, and then the, they wanted us to be there at like 1730. And I would usually get there, especially that last week was... I'd get there like at 1600 or 1630, depending on what was going on. And then we would be walking away from the aircraft about midnight. All we really did was traffic pattern, traffic pattern, traffic pattern with uh, night vision goggles. And uh, that's pretty much all we did. Let's see, I would fly like two hours, my stick buddy would fly like two hours, maybe a little less sometimes. Like four hour flights-ish, three to four hour flights. Sometimes there was some kind of sketchy weather, but... Uh, we were able to get all of our flight time in, so we stayed on schedule for the next week. But I'm not going to tell you about the next week yet. That'll be the next episode, the final episode in this series. And uh, that I'll tell you about how the last three days and my check ride went, or the last two days on my check ride. And then uh, after that, I'm going to start posting videos about uh, like recommendations for starting Common Core, the 60 course, uh, general. And I need to reshoot videos about walks and things like that, just to upgrade the videos. Um, so anyways, get off of it. Ow. And my saddle's all jacked up. It's like the Frankenstein saddle. It's like three saddles into one, um, maybe four. Uh, Sebs sent me a message with a couple of good questions that other people have asked and it's kind of a long answer so I told him I'd just address it in this video so he said great video it was very useful did the army take advantage of you already having your rotorcraft commercial pilot's license uh, <clears throat> no and I didn't tell anybody after I got accepted into the warrant officer program I didn't tell anybody that I had it because uh, a bunch of different reasons Number one, I didn't want them to hold me to a different standard than the other students. Um, because I didn't know how good my instruction was before, because it's all I had ever seen. So, I may have picked up a bunch of bad habits, and I was trying to be open-minded coming into it. Uh, and I wanted to keep them open-minded about me. What I mean is, did they do the exact same training course most off-the-street guys do? And yes, I do the same course that everybody does. Uh, did you find it easier to join with that on your resume? I think the atmosphere has changed now as far as applications and um, all that good stuff. At the time I applied and went to the board and all that, it was, uh, I'm from South Texas, so I don't know what the, I mean, I only had one shot at it, so I only saw everything once. So it's like one dimensional. Um, so I'm not sure what the except like I can tell you three of us applied and three of us got in so uh, I don't know how big that area is that they work down there I have no idea but uh yeah well at least three of us went to the board I don't know how many applied but so did it help me on my resume uh, I think it did 
at least with the recruiter taking me seriously, which sometimes is the hardest part of the battle. Uh, once you get the recruiter behind you, it makes it a lot easier. Not harping on recruiters, but sometimes it's hard to find a good one. I'm planning on doing the same thing. I've already started my private pilot's license, uh, helicopter rotowing training. I have about 44 hours. I will probably get my commercial pilot license as well and then enlist as a warrant officer. Thanks for the videos. Okay. I don't know what the rest of your resume looks like, um, but you seem pretty determined to be a helicopter pilot, so I would continue what you're doing until uh, you get picked up. On the other hand, if you're struggling to pay for your rotor ring license, because it is expensive, I know 18 year olds that got in right out of high school with nothing on their resume. So now this was, they were scooped up when I was scooped up. So I don't know how de desperate the army is or uh, what the atmosphere is like as far as recruiting right now. From what I'm getting is it's a lot more competitive than it was when I got in. So getting your commercial pilot's license or your private pilot's license, rotor wing, that's going to help you for sure. It's gonna make a lot of things easier. The um, check rides on the civilian side are extremely thorough compared to the military check rides. Not that the military check rides aren't thorough, there's just like 10 check rides compared to one four hour check ride that you have to do on the civilian side. Some things will definitely be different. You also have to be aware that you can pick up bad habits. You can pick up bad habits in the army flight program too, so Either way, you can pick up bad habits. You just gotta be aware that there's bad habits and that what you, what you are doing could be the wrong way to do it, according to the Army, according to whoever you're flying with. As far, so as far as the check ride stuff, it's definitely gonna help you. Um, I know when I soloed private my fixed wing and when I soloed in the helicopter, uh, it was like a eye-opening experience. It wasn't like you can look over and like, oh, well, he's gonna take the controls. If anything goes wrong, I'm good. It's a very different experience when you go solo uh, and also when you go solo cross country, the same thing. It's a very different experience. You're, for one thing, you're not distracted talking to somebody else, but for another, you're getting way ahead of the aircraft because like you don't want to crash, you don't want to mess up and you don't want to look like an idiot. So um, those things right there, I think will help you a lot. I hope I covered everything there. Really appreciate all the content, especially the week by week breakdowns. I was selected in the March selection. I was wondering if you have any recommendations or any material to, to start studying before my class date. Thanks. Uh, that's Wyatt Rutherford. Uh, thanks for the comment, man. So that selection, I think, uh, uh, so you're talking about for your warrant officer packet. So congratulations on that. That's awesome. And was wondering if you have any recommendations on any material to study, to start studying before my class date. Thanks. Okay, trust the program. The program's a good program and it's going to take you from zero to a person who can be in the helicopter and keep it in the air at least long enough to get it on the ground somewhat, if that makes any sense. Uh, so just trust the program. Uh, I know you're eager to get into it. If you're just starting like you just got selected and you're about to go to basic, you, not to discourage you from studying, definitely study, study and keep your, and uh, keep your focus. But um, one of the most accurate pieces of advice that I've gotten here at Fort Rucker, the Army Flight Program, is a marathon and not a sprint. Focus on that five meter target, and that's pretty good advice. If you do want to study something, uh, you can always jump into, and you're like wanting to get into the flight stuff, you can always jump into, um, regulations are pretty dry and they probably would go right over your head right now anyways. So I would say aerodynamics, that's a good place to start. And let's see, there's a few books and like the instrument stuff, all that stuff's really gonna go over your head unless you were to go to a flight school and start picking up some of this. But uh, it just depends on how much time you have, how deep you want to get into it. But there's nothing wrong with focusing on that five meter target. Like if you're going to basic, just work out 
um, get ready for basic. If you're coming out of basic and you go into walks, pretty much the same thing. Trust the program. Trust each of the programs, like the walks program, Wobic, and the common core, and then your advanced airframe. It's it kind of keeps the same pace. You're you are very busy, and right when you think it's about to let up and you just finished something, they pile on a whole another load of stuff that you got to learn. And anyways, they they keep you busy throughout the whole course and getting ahead trying to get ahead it's a good like it's a good idea and it's ambitious but um don't burn yourself out is really what i'm getting at kind of rambled on there for a while thanks for the comment all right brandon mcginnis mc mcginnis i'm re-enlisting the military going to the washington national guard i told him i want aviation and going to meet with the crews and unit and see if becoming a uh-60 ch-47 pilot is possible for me I did six years in the army already. If this is possible, I'll definitely sign again. There's so much you can do with this on civilian side, and I hear they love military at commercial airlines. Aside from crazy past work history stuff or medical reasons, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to get in. Uh, but I, I'm not really familiar with the guard side of things. There's so much you can do with this on the civilian side. Yes, there's a lot of stuff you can do on the civilian side. You're not going to get rich doing it, but you'll be flying if you love flying helicopters and all that stuff. Uh, it's a great place to start. All right, so that's all the comments. So next week, I'm getting back on my schedules. I have uh, so I had like kind of a perfect storm of issues that came up, and I just I'm so burnt out. I'm really burnt out. Not on YouTube, but on the just the course and being so dang busy. When I start running out of time. I'll do I'll just focus on the five meter target and uh, so like if I had a test that's coming up on Wednesday and I'm like busy I'm busy Monday I'm trying to get my busy video shot by Thursday or Friday I'll just keep putting it off basically and study Monday and Tuesday take the test and then as long as something else doesn't come up I will shoot the video and do it but anyways that put like just things like that plus my phone broke and then i had i got a new phone then i had to take that phone back and get another one and um then i'm trying to get ready to move packing things and just i'm just, just feel like every episode i'm just like oh it's chaotic or it's busy anyways um so that's why i haven't posted in a couple few weeks but i'm gonna get back on the routine uh, things are slowing down just a tiny bit. Well, I expect things to slow down after tomorrow. So we'll see. So next video will be out next week. I'm going to probably try and start posting again on Tuesday, I think was good for me. Maybe Wednesday. And next week I will tell you about my last two days of flight and my check ride. So you'll get to see that. Uh, well, you'll get to hear about it. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, make sure and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next week. Bye.